welcome to Delicious Chris's Kitchen. What I'm gonna be teaching you to make today is shepherd's pie. Don't give me that, it's not boring. All it is, is, you guys are probably saying, I know what it is. It's ground beef seasoned to perfection. I'm gonna teach you how to do that. With corn or whatever vegetables you want, there's no science, there's no real science to it. I have an affinity for corn, so I'm gonna show you how to season this so it contributes the flavor has a natural sweetness to it. A lot of people put green beans in it. I like green beans a lot, but I'm not gonna do it for this dish. Um, and then you top it with mashed potatoes. As you know, two nights ago I made that spiral chicken and this delicious mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna put this in the recipe. So this one here, we can utilize leftovers. It's a, gr it's a great idea for potluck. And I'm gonna add an Egyptian goulash twist to it and how you make Egyptian goulash, I will teach you on another video when I make it, is ground beef with a cup of onions, it's about a, a pound and a half worth, and you put a teaspoon of allspice, a teaspoon of garlic, into it, salt, pepper to taste. I'm doing that, I don't have an onion, so I put about two tablespoons of minced onion, that's all I have left, but that's fine. It's not a big deal. And you can see here, this is a teaspoon, or just under a teaspoon of allspice, because I'm not sure if that's exactly a pound and a half, I don't want it to overpower it garlic powder is kind of hiding under the onions. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon or a quarter teaspoon of chili powder just to kind of enhance the beefy flavor. And in lieu of using salt, I'm going to use, to give it more of a beefy taste because it is a shepherd's pie, about a half a teaspoon to start of better than bouillon roasted beef base. It is amazing. I use it for just about all of my beef dishes, including my beef stroganoff. It's it's heaven on earth. It's so good. And I, I use this, I use all of these. I use the vegetable base, the chicken base, and this is the roasted beef base. And until I'm ready to use it, I will keep it refrigerated. Sorry, this is not your mother's bouillon. It's not the dry kind that you keep in a cabinet. It's actually like a, it's like a stock. It's like a base that you keep in the refrigerator. Um, while the meat is the frosting, it's still a little frozen. I took it out last night, put it in the refrigerator. It's still a little hard. And if you do have to defrost your meats a little cooked on the outside, don't worry about it because you're going to be sauteing it momentarily anyway. So, let's get the corn started. Juice and everything. Pop it in there. If you want, you don't necessarily have to. I do. I put about a tablespoon or so of butter, uh, garlic, salt, pepper, so it has its own little flavor. That's all you really need for corn. You, corn is kind of uh, an independent kind of food. You don't have to like scoop it alone. You need to seize on eggs. So, let's get that started. Good. Got that started. I'm gonna put this on low heat because there's no rush on it. Uh, my mashed potatoes you don't necessarily have to reheat, but at the very end I will just to get it to loosen up so I can lay it on top of this beefy American lasagna that we call a shepherd's pie. Um, basically, the sky is the limit with this dish. It's a great casserole. I see it on menus at a restaurant, and you know I, I kind of snicker at it. I know I shouldn't because it's actually not a bad dish. I'm like, ah, you know, I want something actually good. But if you do it right, it really is good. So if you have to, if you have company in a pinch, they're hungry, you want to make something in about a half an hour to 45 minutes, boom, shepherd pie. All right, so I will be back when it's time to saute the meat, and I'll show you along the way. I lied. I lied. I'm back. Okay, so I'm going to start making the corn. Let me show you how I do it. Uh, let's pan over here. All right, there's the corn. Like I said, tablespoon, maybe a generous tablespoon, so like a tablespoon, actually no, this is exactly a tablespoon. So I'll put that in there, it just kind of gives it a nice creamy texture because I'm going to lay it on top of the meat. So the mashed potatoes are going to sit on top of it, I think that butter is going to be a nice little commissure between the beef and the potatoes. So there we go, and I'm, I mean it, because a lot of this is because between the meat, it's going to be a little salty, the mashed potatoes has its own salt, you only need just a drizzle. This doesn't really pour out. It's an, oh, by the way, I never pointed this out. This is kosher salt. When you go into the grocery store, take a take a read. Take a look at the sodium content. This actually has, it's weird, less sodium than your leading salt brands. So read the sodium content. This is the way to go. And it's kosher. I mean, I guess I'm tapping into my few percent of Jewish roots. Anyways, so this is just now starting to boil. I'm a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit more generous with the pepper because the pepper does add a nice flavor to it. The pepper sometimes enhances. So, I'm going to stir that in. This is almost done because it's just corn, so 
um, actually, you don't pour the butter takes to it. Let me get rid of some of this liquid. There we go. You don't want it too wet. But you don't want it to burn on the bottom of the pot either. Any, most of my dishes that I cook with, I use the thick bottom pots. Big bottom girls, you know what I mean? Anyways, because it's a, it distributes the heat a lot better than a thin bottom pot, like prime example. This, I strictly use a pot like this with no thick bottom for boiling water or boiling some kind of sauce. Ah, look at this. This is defrosted, and even if it's a little bit frozen, it's okay. It's going to be sauteed anyway. So let's get this going. Put it on about medium heat. We'll pop it in right now. Even though I technically did not touch the meat, I'm going to wash my hands anyway to avoid any chance of cross-contamination. Notice I don't use dish soap. Oh, you can't even see me. I do not use dish soap to wash my hands. Uh, one of my friends in nursing school did an experiment in microbiology of how microbes and microns and different kind of germs form and how many form on your hands. It's disgusting what your hands carry. It's no wonder why the cell phone is one of the dirtiest things in the world. Besides dropping it on the bathroom floor, you're handling it with your hands. I dropped mine on the bathroom floor today. I was disgusted. So you, de you can rest assured I used some hand sanitizer on it. I'm about to bleach it. Anyways, this is pretty much done. You can let that let it rest. So, now, getting back to the story with the microbiology class. They were told they had a whole plethora of soaps to choose to wash their hands for three minutes put it on a petri dish and let it sit for four days. Sit for a period of time to see how much microbes the hand still had on it. Did you know that dish soap is one of the worst? I know I barely wash my dishes with it. I throw it in the dishwasher anyway, but uh, this is actually a natural one. Palm olive is one of the worst. That's according to one of my friends from nursing school. If there are any nursing students or nursing people that are on here that uh, have done a like experiment, let me know, give me some insight. Um, I'm not gonna judge it too harshly. I was not there for the experiment, I did not partake, I would love to. As you know, I'm a germaphobe. But um, I use strictly antimicrobial hand wash. Uh, they did a soap from Bath and Body Works. That was the best. I guess you get what you pay for. It's a pretty expensive for a hand soap. But Alright, so this is starting to sizzle and brown, so I'm try to find a way to get you closer. I'm going to put you on top of my microwave. Let's see how that works. Mmm... This thing is all right, you know. Sit by me. I'm gonna sign off and put it forward. All right. So this is a little cumbersome. Holding this at the same time as cooking. So, you know, I have a little foot step here because I am vertically challenged. All right. So, you know what? I have an idea. Let's do this. I'll transfer this to the back. There we go. Better feel the heat. All right. So you can see it's starting to brown a little bit. So, real easy to take all of the seasonings, pour it on. There's really no science to it. I'm, uh, I have a Bible study at my church tonight, so I'm making a small group, so I'm making shepherd pie. Hopefully they come hungry and they leave happy. Oh, did I just steal IHOP slogan? No, because I said hopefully they come and then they leave happy. So I didn't plagiarize too bad. You can already, oh, I just wafted it over to you. You can already smell, it almost smells like a meatloaf or meatballs cooking, it smells amazing. So after it starts cooking a little bit, I'm gonna add the beef bouillon, or the better than bouillon, beef bouillon. Anyways, so shepherd's pie. You're not gonna believe me when I tell you, but this is my first time making it, but I just know from the bottom of my heart that it's not a hard thing to do. A lot of people never make it because maybe they're not sure, maybe they're a little intimidated, uh, our society is cooking less at home and eating out more, but I'm trying to gain your confidence back by doing this for you. Now, I know a lot of these, I used to watch the Cooking Network all the time, and I used to picture myself maybe doing a cooking show when I was a kid. <laughs> well, did you ever watch them, and even though they tell you exactly what to do, you find it hard? I did. So, I hope that my videos help you, help it make it easy for you, because... I'm not being flippant while I'm cooking, but I'm letting you know that it's not a big deal if you don't do it exactly how I do it. And you can see how, you know, I'm not this great cook. It just, 
doesn't come naturally. It, I learned it over time. And it's not as scary as it as it tries to portray itself to be. I'm going to put you back on the fridge. You kind of know what I'm doing already. I'm going to add the beef bouillon about a half a tablespoon more. But I won't do it without you watching. So, see you in a couple seconds. I'm back. Okay. Put that stuff back there. Better than bouillon. Hi. I think I'm going to leave that on the video. It's kind of funny. Thank God for the OtterBox. So, if you have an iPad and like it a lot, buy an OtterBox. It's, it's indestructible. Knock the glasses right off my head. Okay. Now, I'm back. Can't wait to play that one back. Alright, so. Not sure what a teaspoon is. In lieu of salt, you're going to use about this much. It's like a little tiny scoop of peanut butter for a mini toast. You ever see the little mini toast at the, at the shop, right? Or at whatever your grocery store is that you would put tartare on or some kind of cheese, like a brie? Well, that should just about give a nice, handsome helping on a baby toast. So, oh wow, smell it already. If you even want to, uh, Worcestershire sauce, let me show you what that is. It's one of my favorite go-to additives for food. But I'm not going to do it for this one. I don't see why you couldn't. But, this is a great meat enhancer. I put this in my meatloaf, my meatballs. Uh, I marinate my steak with it. It's just heaven on earth. It's A lot of my stuff in the kitchen is heaven on earth. I mean, God reigns over my house. So I guess it should be, right? <laughs> Alright. Right, so I'm just going to cook this a little bit. Let me give it a sniff. Mmm, wow. This, this is coming out. Eh, eh, amazing. So this shepherd pie is going to be really good. It's kind of like, I've always pictured it, like kind of like, you ever go to the restaurant and get meatloaf and you're just not impressed? It just tastes like somebody took ground beef, baked it with maybe a little salt and pepper, and then threw mashed potatoes next to it. That's how I envisioned what a, uh, a shepherd pie would taste like. I just pictured like a slab of meatloaf with mashed potatoes on top of it instead of next to it. But it's actually an art of a budget abiding dish. It's very economical, and I can tell you right now, it's going to be very delicious. So this is pretty much done. Um, you will drain the meat. That doesn't mean it's going to lose all its flavor just getting rid of the fat. A lot of the flavor has adhered to the meat itself. Um, I did forget to add pepper. I should have done that from the get-go, but I didn't. So this is literally just a generous sprinkle. If you really want to know, it's maybe like a quarter to a half a teaspoon worth. All right. You know... Some of the best cooks in the world cook the taste. There's really no science to it. I mean... Hmm. I'm gonna take another piece. Ooh, there we go. Thank you. It's very good, but it needs something. I think it probably needs more onion, actually. But, make do with what you got. I'm going to use just a sprinkle of tastefully simple garlic garlic, just to add a little bit. Whoops. I will show you. It's just enough to know that you put it on there. Not a terrible amount. And of course the mashed potatoes carry its own flavor. It's very, I put a little bit of sour cream into it, uh, milk, butter, uh, salt to taste. I used garlic powder for that. I'm trying to think what else. Pepper, salt, I think I said that. Basically how you like your mashed potatoes, that's how you make it. Uh, if you want to put cheddar cheese on top of your mashed potatoes for you, make it like a loaded version, you can. Why not, right? Oops. Better. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a little bit of Worcestershire. It's, I mean, it's always a good additive. Just do like a sprinkle. It just enhances the beef flavor immensely. And I will do a little bit more. Better than bouillon, but I... Oh, that's my butter knife. That's my butter knife. That was already in the meat, so you don't want to cross-contaminate. Take another one. Put another dollop. See? It's not terrible if you put a little too much in. I mean, it's going to have potatoes on it. Potatoes kind of absorb a lot of flavor. Probably I need to just suck it up and oh, oh, oh goodness, my, my mouth is stuck. Um, add salt. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. 
tiny, tiny bit. There's less sodium in this than your leading salt brand, you know, like the one with the girl with the raincoat? Yeah, this has less than that. Salt is a food enhancer. It's not, I mean, it does bring up your blood pressure to an extent. I don't put salt on everything like crazy, just enough to taste. This is about a pound and a half to two pounds of beef, and I put maybe a quarter teaspoon worth. I mean, you do have the sodium from the uh, Worcestershire sauce and the bouillon as well, but we have the mashed potatoes. Potatoes, I put minimal amount of salt in the potatoes. Because potatoes, you can always add salt, so. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So, the bouillon was an honest amount, up to a tablespoon of the bouillon. So here we have it. So let's go on ahead and drain this. Those are my birds. I, I almost dropped it. I have a white-bellied kai. They're native to Africa. I have a Panamanian Amazon. You can imagine what they're native to. Panama. And I have a pineapple green cheek conure, and she's actually native to Brazil. They're found throughout South America, but that little hatchling came from Brazil. Isn't that amazing? Or her ancestors came. It's pretty cool. I got that background on her. Alright, so this is drained. I keep forgetting to preheat the oven. But while that's preheating, I'm just going to lay this on the bottom. It's going to be amazing. I kind of like videotaping myself. It's like I have someone to talk to. And as a woman, what woman doesn't like a one-way conversation when they're that one way? <laughs> Anyways, so, get some of the onion on there. Yummy. And onion and meat go hand in hand like peas and carrots. I'm not really a fan of peas, but I imagine people have an endearing thought about peas and carrots. So we're just going to lay this on top. like a cross between American lasagna and a casserole. And I just had a thought. You know those French's crispy onions? I have not once brought that stuff into my house. I don't know what they put in it, but if that's something you like, I don't see why you couldn't put it on top. Give it like a nice crispy outside. Alright, so what I'm going to do is cook a little bit of this. There we go. I'm just going to heat it up lightly. I clean as I go. I, I, there's nothing worse than a messy kitchen after you're done cooking and knowing that after you eat, you have a big mess to clean up. Cleaning sucks. Why not just get it over with from the beginning? So after you're done eating, you can just be fat and sit down for a second and not have, be like, you know what, my kitchen's clean already. Who needs to clean? I don't, because I cleaned it. So, that's what I do. There we go. I try to play Tetris with my dishes. So all I have to do is grab it into the drawer. I don't have to sit there and act like it's a cash register by going like this. Right? Yeah. Ooh, that's a plate that fun time away. So I don't have to be clean too. Alright, so. This is getting a little bit warm. I kind of want this a little bit creamy. You don't want it too tough. That's why you would heat it up. It kind of loosens it up a little bit. the best cook in the world, but more than just one, more than just three people suggested I do a cooking show, so everybody did. And I'm not bragging, it's just I enjoy it. I really, it, if you put love in your heart into your food, people can taste it. It's so true. You ever go to a restaurant, and even though they follow the same recipe, because you know they, they have their signature dishes, 
when you have a different chef on, don't you taste the difference? Be like, oh, you know, there's this one restaurant uh, in Edison, New Jersey that I like to go to, and sometimes I wonder which uh, chef is on. I realize that he's on earlier in the day, the other one's on at night, so if I want good food, I have to go early. S same recipe, one loves what they do, one doesn't. So, if you put some love into your food, or love into your cooking, it will come out very good. And what is love? Love is patient, love is kind, love is quick to forgive. Your dishes will be more forgiving if you put some love into it. So, let me see here. Just gonna lay a little layer. All right, turn that off. make like a soup underneath like a very thick stew you don't necessarily have to you can um i don't like watery food that much i kind of like it thick if you watch my how to make uh sausage and peppers you'll see why sometimes when you when dishes are too wet they don't reheat well sometimes they get soggy sometimes especially when you're dealing with a starch like pasta potatoes rice it gets very mushy but if you keep it dry or very thick it kind of holds better. That's why stroganoff oftentimes tastes better when you reheat it because it's so thick it doesn't really get mushy. It does a little bit, but it's a good mushy. Kind of like me. Big mushy. There we go. I'm going to the spoon. I'm just kidding. So this is done. It smells so good. I say that in every video. But really, it does. I, I really wish you guys could smell it. Yeah, I'm just let me play clean up. Uh, you know what? That's gonna burn on the edges. So what I'm gonna do is just wipe it off with a clean paper towel. Keep it nice and even. And this way here I can lay foil on top and not have to worry that it's gonna get caked underneath. There we go. See? Did you guys see this movie, I Can Only Imagine? It's actually a good movie. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a fan of the song, but the story behind it's very amazing. All right, so. I'm gonna lay this on. Okay, lay this on for about the first 20 minutes, and then take it off, because you do want your potatoes to be nice and browned on top. for 20 minutes. Silent treatment much? Please set alarm for 20 minutes. Okay, I set an alarm for 16.47. Military time. I'm military. Okay, I will see you in 20 minutes. Well, after the video goes out, I'll be like, I'm back. All right, I'm back. Okay, so. The alarm went off. Ooh, it's not exactly 350, but that's okay. My oven's a little hotter. I, you know what's funny? Every time I hit I'm back, my face changes. Like, sometimes my glasses are on, sometimes they're not. I thought I'd put on my winter hat that one of my friends from church, a very dear friend of mine, made this for me. Isn't that awesome? My favorite color is green, so she made me a green one. Okay, so, let's do it. Um, don't do this at home. I know I'm home, but I'm just going to take off the foil with my bare hands. Alright, we're going to let it cook for another 15 minutes. Just so that the mashed potatoes get brown on top. And then, I'm going to test taste it. Just to taste just how good it most likely is. Set alarm for 15 minutes. I've set an alarm for 17.03. Alright. So I set, ooh, hold on a second. Oh, my dad. He always sends me these updates. You know, like, uh, baby powder apparently is carcinogenic. Good to know. So, if you have babies, or like to powder your hiney, don't do it, because baby powder, I think, has talc in it. Which, you know, I love this country, but we put too many weird things in our stuff that kills people. Anyways, politic-free, and pro or against nation. I, I just like to keep it light and happy for my cooking. 
But, uh, with that said, I try to keep my food when I cook as natural and as harm free as possible in the medical field. We take an oath to never cause or enhance harm on people. So I take that concept and apply it here as well. Notice I'm in my scrubs. I have like 15 pairs of these. So I literally just got home from work a little bit ago. I'm going to be off to Bible study in about an hour, so this will have time to cool a little bit so I can not burn anything on my way there, so I figured I'd start cooking it now. Um, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think, especially if you tried one of these recipes. and Let me know what you think of it. I hope you like it. Um, there's really no... I mean, there is a science to food, but it's not, it doesn't have to be an exact science. It's not like... I mean... It's probably why I'm not a baker. I suck at baking. I know, it's weird. I, my brother, it's funny, he makes pumpkin pies from scratch. They are to die for. My sister can make the best cheesecake in the world, and it's half the sweetness that most people put. Like, she doesn't go crazy with the sugar. And one of her secrets is a little bit of sour cream. Who knew? And it actually kind of makes it perfect. I'm not a cheesecake eater. I mean, you wouldn't think so, but I'm not big on very sweet things, except maybe chocolate cake and chip cookies and oreo cookies and anyways <laughs> just kidding um yeah i'm actually a lot of this problem is because of my pituitary gland and there's like some weird things going on in my head that's not mental it's physical um you might not think about it you might not think that because of how silly i get but you know what the world is so serious you know it's nice to not watch something that makes you more angry that's why i don't i'm not a political person that's why i don't watch the news that's why i don't watch politics it just makes me angry so I'd rather watch stuff like this. I like, my favorite thing to watch is how-to videos. Like those little five easy ways to, you know, five life hacks in the kitchen or five easy ways for arts and crafts. It's amazing. I can't tell you how many things I saved in my house that I learned on YouTube. YouTube is a great tool when used correctly. Um, yeah, so I hope you like it. And I'll see you in a few minutes. I will show you the finished product of my first ever made shepherd's pie. If you can make a meatloaf, you can make a shepherd's pie. So, I will see you on the flip side. Maybe even literally on camera. I'll just flip the image so you can just look at the food. All right, bye. I am back. Okay, so we're done. Taking it out of the oven now. Actually, you know what? This is a two mitt job. It's a little bit brown. All right, I'm gonna give you a nice close look. Oh, take a nice close look at that. See, it's a little bit crispy on the edges. Not bad. It smells like a shepherd's pie. It looks like a shepherd's pie. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, most likely it's a duck. So, most likely, I just created a shepherd, a, a shepherd, a shepherd's pie. Let's take a little bit of the middle. And, you know, I did drop this again. And some words came out. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I repented from it. Don't worry. So, little corner. Give me a little, let's see, let's get a little bit of the meat. There we go. Okay, now, this is what it kind of looks like on my dish. I mean, it doesn't look appetizing. It looks like mush. But it tastes, it, my mouth is watering. It tastes like a really good mush. You know what? It's, well, it's actually 41 degrees out, but... I'm gonna open the oven a little bit to spread some heat. It was literally three degrees yesterday morning. It was the day for baking, but I don't bake. It's good. The only thing is maybe add a little salt, but you can add it. You can add it right on the dish to somebody else's this is actually perfect. Well, so good. I think it's, I think it's company approved. The company that comes over, not. So what I'll do is gingerly place this on top. Because I will be taking this with me. Because I live alone. There's no way I'm eating this. I look like I can, but I can't. So, I hope you like this video. I'm sorry for dropping you those couple of times. I hope it didn't hurt you. So, peace out. Bless you guys.